Welcome back to Booze in the Rocks, where we make cocktails for everyone. My name is David Edwards, and today we're going to make a simple rum punch. Let's get into it. It's great to have every single one of you back here, my friends. We are making a rum punch. Now, punches themselves have been around for a very long time. In fact, they go back as far as the 1500s, and they were commonly made with wine and called with sales at the time. However, when you skip forward to the 1650s, and you start to get an abundance of rum being made out of the Caribbean, and it starts to spread throughout North America, people started substituting rum for wine because, well, it was cheaper to get distilled rum than it was to actually ship wine across the ocean. So you skip forward to today, and our tastes have changed even more. So you know what? We're making a simple rum punch today that you're all really gonna enjoy. So let's get into this. The first thing you need is your shaking glass. Your first spirit of choice is going to be a white rum. In this case, I'm using Plantation's Three Star Rum, and I need an ounce and a quarter or seven and a half milliliters. Yes, look at that. The next rum of choice that you're going to use is a dark rum. In this case, I'm using Fortress Rum. It is a Canadian rum that originally comes from Jamaica and is stored in the Magasin de Roy, which is actually an old, also known as the King Store. Now this is on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean where you start to get that brininess that comes in and it affects the wood that the rum is stored in. However, it imports, imparts wonderful flavors to this rum. And again, we need an ounce and a quarter or 37 and a half mil. Yeah, look at that. Now, the next thing you will need is pineapple juice. In this case, I'm using pure pressed pineapple juice. It's completely unsweetened and you need two ounces or 60 milliliters. Awesome. We're then gonna step over to some orange juice and I'm using some cold pressed orange juice that I got from my local grocery store and we're going to use one ounce or 30 milliliters. Almost there. Now, we do need a little bit of lime. And what we're going to do is grab a lime and we're going to cut it in half. And then we're going to cut another little section out for our garnish. We have ourselves a small little wedge that way. Grab your squeezer. And for this, we need a quarter of an ounce, which is seven and a half mils. We'll look at that. Move those over here. Next, you need some grenadine. In this case, I'm using a homemade grenadine. It's one part pomegranate juice to one part sugar with half an ounce of an orange liqueur in there. Now, you could use orange oil, which you'd need about five milliliters, or orange flower water, which would be two to three drops, depending on how much orange you actually want. And we need a quarter of an ounce or 7.5 milliliters. Now, that will give us a little bit of color and it will add a little bit of sweetness and just change the flavors just a little bit. Grab some ice. Apparently I'm making a lot of noise here. And what we'll do is we will shake this for a good 10 to 15 seconds. So slap your uh, shaking on top, make sure you have a nice tight line. This will ensure that you get a good seam and shake it hard for a good 10 to 15. Yeah. Pop that open like so. It's looking really good. I'll put that over, that over the way. Dry my hands in this. Grab your glass of choice. In this case, I'm using a hurricane glass. I really like the shape. I just like the way they look. Choose whatever you want. You could even have it in a uh, mason jar if that's what you want. Grab some fresh ice. And then you're good to go. So what you'll do is you'll just grab your Hawthorne strainer. I'm not worried about fine straining this. If you want, you can. Just give this a pour. And you're almost done. Grab a maraschino cherry. I'm gonna use one with a straw. And look, this one just literally jumped out for me. And I'll put these on here like that. And perfect, we're good to go. So let's see how it smells. So immediately you get the hints and the smells from the maraschino cherry and the lime right there. You get a little bit of the rump smell, but you don't get a heavy funk like you might expect. Mm. Really, really good. 
the rum shines through. You get those banana flavors, you get those funk flavors, and it just sort of swells in your mouth. You get a little bit of the pineapple juice and the orange juice, and that hint of lime just sort of pulls it all together with the grenadine. Oh, yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ingredients in the method of how to make this down in the description down below. If you think I should use different rums or different juices, or you have your very own rum punch recipe, put it down in the comments down below, because then we can drive a really good conversation about what it actually means to have a good rum punch and we get to see everybody's different tastes. If this is your first time to my channel, please check out my subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell notification. That way, every time I put up a new video, you will be notified. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please check us out at patreon.com forward slash booze on the rocks because every little bit helps us to bring these videos to you. You know what? You have a great day. And those were commonly called wassails and made with wine. However, once you start skipping back, sales. However, but once you skip forward to the wine, because it's much cheaper to grow and grow. You don't grow rum.